Have you ever dreamt of asking questions to a PDF file? Well, dreams do come true. Now you can ask questions to a PDF file using the power of large language models, retrieval augmented generation, and the incredible capabilities of vector databases. So in this video, I'll show you exactly how you can ask questions to a PDF file. So let's start. Before I jump and show you the actual magic using Python, I wanted to give you some background in terms of the solution as well. Large language models are good at generating new text. Text such as poems, code, scripts, emails and letters. However, one of the drawbacks of using LLMs is sometimes they can be inaccurate and they can produce text that is not factually correct. What do we do in that case? Well, in comes retrieval based models. Retrieval based models are good at finding information in large database or on the internet. They can quickly scan through large amounts of data, identify the passages that are most relevant to a given query and give out a result. However, one of the drawbacks of using retrieval based models is that they can't generate new text. What do we do in that case? Well, we have retrieval augmented generation for our rescue. RAG models basically combine the best of both worlds. They use retrieval based models to find the most relevant information to a given query and then use generative based models to generate a response that is both informative and accurate. Just to show you how an RAG system works, let me start off by asking a simple question. Who is the president of the United States of America? What happens under the hood is there is a retriever that searches for relevant documents in a knowledge base like Wikipedia. Once it finds an article for Joe Biden, the LLM then uses this information to generate the response stating that Joe Biden is the 46th and the current president of the United States and assumed office on January 20, 2021. So this is the power of RAG where RAGs consist of converting user inputs into an embedding vector then finding documents into cosine similar to user's query and then answering the LLM based on the question that has been asked. So I'll discuss more on this once we reach at the implementation. All your user queries have to be converted into embeddings. In order to store embeddings with respect to documents, we require vector databases. In this video, the vector database that I'm using is a very popular database, which is Apache Cassandra. Now Apache Cassandra needs no introduction. It's a high performance proven database that's existed for years now. Cassandra is basically a distributed database, meaning that it can run across multiple nodes. The entire database solution is highly available and resilient to failure. Apache Cassandra delivers high performance both in terms of latency and relevance. The reason why Cassandra is so popular is you can have Cassandra nodes spread across various locations across the world, ensuring that your data is always available and accessible. Just to give you context, Apple is running over 75,000 of Cassandra nodes, storing more than 10 petabytes of data. At least one cluster has over 1000 plus nodes and Apple regularly gets millions of operations per second be it read or write using Cassandra. Apple uses Cassandra in iCloud, Apple Maps and Siri. So this is the scale at which Cassandra operates and in our solution we'll be making use of Apache Cassandra. Now after giving you all the background, let's jump to the actual implementation piece. In order to use Apache Cassandra as a vector database, I'm using Datastax AstraDB. Well, AstraDB from Datastax is a fully managed Cassandra cloud service that makes it easy to deploy, operate and scale Cassandra clusters. You can basically sign up for free Apache Cassandra nodes as well. And I've already created an account. I'm using a free account, which is what I'll show you in this particular video as well. Let me log into my account. Once you log in, this is the home page. There are tons of other examples that you can explore as well. But what I'll do first is I'll create a database. So I'll click on create a database. So I'll click on vector database. I'll give the DB name as Bhavesh Astra test. 
I'll give a simple key space name as well, which is PDF Q N A test. I will go with Google Cloud as my default cloud provider, and I'll select the default, and I'll select the default region, which is US East One, and finally I'll click on Create Database. So for the first time, the process will take some time in terms of getting the database up and running. It shouldn't take long. And here is where I get a pop-up stating that now the database is active. So I'll quickly go forward and I'll press connect. Given that I'll be using Python in order to connect to DataStax or a DB, which is nothing else but Apache Cassandra, I'll require two sets of outputs from this particular screen. The first thing that I'll require is an application token, and I'll need the database admin access. So I'll click on generate token. I'll download this particular token file. The other piece that I require is getting a secure connect bundle. So I'll click on get bundle. I'll select US East one as my region. And I'll download the secure bundle as well. So I have both my files up and running. So let's now jump over to the coding section. We finally reached the coding section, and now I'll walk you through the entire process of how you can query your PDF document. So before we begin, I already have a Google Colab session up and running, and here I have uploaded a PDF file called as Attention Paper. Which is nothing else but the baseline paper that transformed natural language processing in 2017. So this is attention is all you need. The PDF version is what I've uploaded here. The two files that I downloaded previously, which is the JSON file as well as the Secure Connect file, all of them have been uploaded here. So these are the only three files that I have in my current Google Colab session. I'll quickly minimize this. And now I'll kickstart the entire process of showing you how you can query your PDF using questions. Okay, so let's kickstart the activity by the set of installs. So here is where I'll require Cassandra Driver, Langchain, OpenAI, PyPDF, Casio, TikToken. Okay, I'll quickly run this cell to make the installations happen. The Casio library that I'm installing currently is something that gives me access to Apache Cassandra. So these are the top features that it has. This is the overall architecture. So you can build applications using Casio along with Langchain, Llama Index, and the other connectors that are there. So this is something that I wanted to show you before I start the actual implementation piece as well. The installation is up and running. So I'll quickly go down. The first thing that I'll do is I'll check the Cassandra version. So the Cassandra version that I have is 3.28.0. So we are on the latest version of Cassandra. This piece of code is something that I've borrowed directly from the helper Python connector code that was available on the site. So what we are doing is we are connecting to the Astra DB using Python. We are supplying the secure connection files, which is a zip file, which is already uploaded here. And then I'm also supplying the JSON file, which contains my credentials. Now that I've supplied the secure connect zip file as well as my credentials via a JSON file, now I just have to connect to the database that I've just created. So that is something that I'm doing using this piece of code. Given once the connection has been established and once there is a session up and running, I'll call the session dot execute function and I'll generate the row as an output. If the connection is successful, then I'll have my first row printed. So I'll quickly run this particular cell. So here is the release version. It gives me some errors and warnings, which you can safely ignore. So we have the connection established. Now, once this piece is done, let's move forward. I require functions from Langchain, which I'll import in this particular section. So I'll quickly run this cell. I'm using an OpenAI based solution in this particular example. So you will require the OpenAI key as well. I've already pasted my serial key in the section that I just showed you. So I'll quickly run this particular cell. So here is where the initialization piece comes in. So I initialize the OpenAI module. I also require the OpenAI embeddings, which is what I'll 
kind of initialize here. So I'll quickly run this piece of code. So in this piece of code, what I want to do is I want to create index for the documents that I upload. So in general, vector databases are used to store and search for vectors, which are mathematical representations of data. Indexing in vector databases is a process of organizing the vectors in the database in such a way that they can be quickly searched and retrieved. This is extremely important because vector searches can be computationally very expensive when you have scale in hand, which is where indexing plays a crucial role. So what I'm doing is I'm using vector store index creator to index all the documents that I upload and all the indexes or all the indexes once generated would be saved into the vector database that I've just created. So what I do first is I define a table name called as PDF underscore Q underscore N underscore A underscore table underscore one. This is the table name. The key space is still the same key space that I used previously while creating the database. Here is where I'm creating the index. So I've defined vector store index creator. I've defined what all inputs are required. So the embedding will be using the OpenAI embedding. I'm using Cassandra. Given if the document is like really huge, I won't be able to create like an embedding for the entire document, which is where I'll have to recursively split the characters in the document, which is what I'm doing here. I've defined the chunk size and the chunk overlap window as well. After chunking happens and after all the embeddings are generated, it is here that the output will be saved. So this is where the session comes in, the key space comes in and the table comes in. So I'll quickly run this piece of code as well. The overall indexing piece is now done. Now I have to supply the PDF document, which is where now what I'll do is I'll load the PDF. So I'm using the PyPDF library. And now in the first line of code, what I do is I call the PyPDF loader function and I supply the file name of the PDF that I want to load. So here in our case, the file name is attention paper.pdf. I load it into a variable called as loader. And now loader will have multiple pages. I basically call the load and split function to split all my PDF pages into multiple pages and here I save it into a variable called as pages. So this is what I do here. So I'll quickly run this cell. The PDF had how many pages? The PDF had 12 pages. And if I show you the second page of the PDF, this is what the actual output looks like. So here you have recurrent models typically, and then the entire text comes in. So all the text that existed in that particular PDF is part of the pages list. Every element in the list will correspond to an individual page. Okay. Now I'll pass page by page to the index variable that I've created. The index will kind of convert that into embeddings and store it into the vector database that we've just defined. Okay. Now here is where I'll kind of load the chunks into index. Okay. So here I define a variable called as PDF underscore index where index creator is a variable that we've created above. So index creator dot from loaders. So all the loaded PDF chunks that I have will be loaded into this particular index creator and all the result will be saved into this particular PDF index. So I'll quickly run this. So the indexing is complete. Now what I'll show you is how does my database look like with all the embeddings in place? So I'll quickly run this particular command, which is select star from key space dot table name. And I'll execute this particular query that I've defined. And I'll show you the different aspects of what all gets saved into the vector database. So I'll quickly run this cell. So here is how the PDF has been chunked and saved into the vector database. So this is a unique row ID. Here is the embedding vector and here is what the text looks like. Here it clearly says that this particular row ID has been extracted from page number eight. And this is the source, which is our current attention paper dot PDF. Similarly, you have row 90, 91. So here you have multiple such rows. So this is how the entire, so it starts from page zero, page five, page six. So it randomly picks up chunks 
and it creates a corresponding embedding for it and saves it into the vector database. Okay. So this is something that I wanted to show you. The more bigger PDF you load, the more rows it will create. And given Cassandra is known for the scale at which it can operate, you can keep pushing bigger and bigger PDFs to ask questions as well. I've used a simple PDF. I can upload a bigger PDF and show you as well. But Cassandra as a whole can scale really well. It's highly available, which is where I've chosen Cassandra as a vector database. Now, if this idea is clear, what we've done is we've done all the heavy lifting that we have to do. Uh, we've already saved all the data in form of embeddings into a vector database. Now we just have to ask questions and get answers. And yeah, that is something that I'll show you right now. So I'll quickly go here. Uh, here is where I'll create a variable called as query underscore one. I'll enter the input question that I want to ask. And finally, I'll pass in that particular query as an input. Define the LLM variable as equal to LLM. So in our case, the LLM is open AI. And here I'll call the function query underscore with underscore sources. So that is what I have handy here. So I'll ask the question, what is multi head attention? So when I run this, I'm hopeful of getting an answer. And here is the answer that comes in. So the question that I had asked is what is multi head attention? The answer that I'm getting is multi head attention is a type of attention mechanism, which allows the model to jointly attend to information from different representations and the list and the answer goes on. So this has been retrieved from my vector database. Isn't this amazing? So you can think of having like a PDF of uh, say hundred thousand uh, pages. All of this can be scaled and compressed and kind of extracted to get answers from it, right? Uh, I can change the question. I can ask what is positional, what is positional encoding? So if someone wants to understand this from the PDF itself. So here is the answer. Again, I am, again, this is not an answer directly from a large language model. It clearly states that the source is basically the attention paper dot PDF. Now, once you have this particular answer as well, now I have the answer in form of a dictionary that I'm getting. What if I only want the answer? So I can say response is the variable. And if I print response of answer, I'll get only the answer section. So here is the answer. Now what I've done so far is I've taken a PDF. I've created chunks. Every chunk has been converted into an embedding. And that embedding has been saved into Apache Cassandra via data stacks Astra DB. And once a query comes in based on similarity score, a result has been populated. Now that I just have to upload the PDF and get results out of it. What I'll do now is I'll take this piece of code and rather than kind of going through the entire process again, the skeleton of the code will still remain the same. But now I'll convert this into a streamlit application. So whatever I've shown you is what I've translated into a streamlit application. So the overall structure of the code is still the same, but I've used streamlit's chatbot interface to create an amazing chat application. And this is what I've created. So once I now execute this particular piece of Python code, what you now see is an application that I've developed, which can take in a PDF file. You can ask questions to the PDF file in natural language, and it will kind of go through the entire PDF and give out results for you. So this is something that I wanted to show you today. I wanted to show you how you can kind of ask questions to your PDF and how you can kind of not worry about the PDF size by using Apache Cassandra because it can scale really, really well. So this is something that I wanted to demonstrate today. I hope you found this video informative. If you do like the content that I post on my channel, it would be super motivating if you can press the subscribe button and also press the bell icon to be notified for amazing videos on data science and machine learning. Thank you so much for watching the video.